Now at 10, a Pittsburgh elementary school hosts a school carnival plus holiday lanes in Pittsburgh kick off its annual bowling tournament. And Web City High School performs the day the internet died at the new Cardinal Theater. The four states most watched news starts now. Kansas lawmakers yesterday passed a bill to cut taxes for residents, but it might not make it all the way to becoming a law. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Anthony Saviello. The House and Senate passed the bill, which would cut taxes by more than one and a half billion dollars over the next three years. However, Governor Laura Kelly has indicated she will veto the measure, and it's not clear if lawmakers have the votes to override the veto. The main point of the contention is a change to the tax bracket system. The state currently has three. This bill would reduce it to one. Both the House and Senate would need a two-thirds majority to override a possible veto. The Oklahoma Senate is considering a bill that would raise the state's legal age of consent. The law currently holds the age of consent at 16. Grant Palmer spoke with one of the bill's sponsors to learn more. In general, the age of consent is being raised from 16 to 18. Oklahoma could soon become one of the states that requires the age of consent to be 18 years of age if Senate Bill 615 is heard and then passed in the House. Representative Olson says the aim of the bill is to protect teenagers, especially those who might be in vulnerable situations. We don't want an older man, say a 35-year-old man who's a coach or an authority figure to abuse his position with a 16-year-old to get her to consent. So we don't want that to happen. However, Olson says he and supporters of the bill don't want to interfere with what he says would be considered more normal. Say a 16 and an 18-year-old. But so in the law, it does allow that earlier minimum age to be 14 okay if someone's in close to the same age and so this moves it to 15. in light of this bill when we asked olson if he believes marriage laws in the state that allow those as young as 16 to be married should also be modified here's what he had to say so in general i don't think it's to be recommended personally i don't think under 20 is normally to be recommended but that's that's my judgment based on a few things, but do we want to make that a matter of law? Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us with a first look at weather. I hope everyone has had a wonderful Sunday. We had some fire weather conditions in our area because we had pretty low humidity across the region, less than 20% humidity. Temperatures are starting to drop now down to about 60 degrees and across the region, even some of us getting into the 50s, Iola 59, Independence 58. So we're starting to cool off as we go into the overnight hours. Now we don't have any rain on the forecast and nothing's coming in until tomorrow evening. Pretty late actually, we'll have some rain coming in. We have a secondary low pressure system forming off the coast and it'll be moving into our area after midnight on Monday. But we do have those clouds rolling in earlier than that, which may cause some concern on how you could view the solar eclipse but I'll have all those updates for you right after the break. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Holiday Lanes in Pittsburgh is kicking off its annual four state tournament this weekend. The tournament categories include singles, doubles, and teams with more than 200 participants. Event organizers say this tournament gives people of all ages a chance to play the sport. Um, we get to see a lot of our tournament bowlers only once or twice a year, and we've been seeing a lot of these folks for many, many years. Um, I've got people that have been playing it longer than I've been around, and I've been doing it for 29 years. So it's kind of nice, a lot of camaraderie. This is the 63rd year the Bowling Alley has hosted the event. Today, a Pittsburgh Elementary School community came together for a carnival. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on how the event benefits a good cause. Uh, we're having fun. Meadowlark Elementary in Pittsburgh was filled with students, but they weren't there for class. Students and their families gathered together for the school's annual carnival. Attendees could play various games, win prizes, get face paint, or jump in a bounce house. I'm very excited. I, um, I'm very happy to be here um, experiencing in this or being involved. 
and volunteers from across the community came to help support, including local football players and students from other schools. It's exciting to see the support that the school has from the community and the people who donated items for the silent auction um, and just having that for the school. Attendees could bid on various silent auction items. Organizers say the proceeds from the auctions and carnival go to a very special cause. We have just ordered a book vending machine and that is something we've been raising money for for the last two years and so the money from Carnival is going to help fill that with books for students to earn um, through showing positive behaviors and different skills and things within the school building. For students and their families the Carnival is a way for them to help bond in a place they go to every day. It brings in the families into the school where they don't normally get to be a part of and it just bridges that gap between school and home. And for some, it's just a place to have fun with their loved ones. One student described the carnival as a water slide because... Maybe because it's how fun it is. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Organizers say if you are interested in helping sponsor the upcoming book vending machine, you can call Meadowlark's front office to learn more. Webb City High School today performed the day the internet died for the community. The comedy demonstrates what would happen in today's world if the internet, well, died. A synopsis of the show says it embodies how much present day culture relies on the internet when it comes to shopping, communication, and social media. The show, which is described as a comedy, was written by Ian McWethy and Jason Pizzarello. I want them to contemplate how, how much do they use the internet? How much time do they you know, spend stuck on that screen compared to talking with their spouse, with their children, uh, with uh, community members, with the church members, whoever they come in contact with. Today's performance was at the Cardinal Theater. Coming up, how researchers at an Illinois university plan to study the effect of the eclipse on, of animals during tomorrow's celestial event. Plus, we meet Parker, the Arkansas eclipse baby, born in 2017 during a solar eclipse. Millions of people are anxiously waiting for tomorrow's big eclipse, and one of the prime spots to watch in the U.S. is Carbondale, Illinois, where researchers will be exploring how the big celestial event will affect our pets and furry friends. Scientists with Southern Illinois University and other places are making audio recordings across the path of to totality. It's uh, to study animals' behavior during the event. Researchers say the data will be used for the next 350 years, which is when this area will experience its next total solar eclipse. Lots of different special events will be going for the eclipse, but for some, normal life still has to go on, including maybe bringing in new lives into the world. Parker Lane Brown, born literally as partial solar eclipse was passing through in 2017, is now known as the eclipse baby. Lauren Spencer has more. She was born during an eclipse. Um, but that had nothing to do with what just made her special to us. You've heard of New Year's babies. You've heard of Leap Day babies. What about solar eclipse babies? We were actually scheduled to be induced on Tuesday and they asked us to come in a day early. So we went in Monday morning, not really prepared to have a baby that day. Parker Lane Brown, born August 21st at 1.21 p.m., which also happened to be the partial solar eclipse of 2017. Everyone had been talking about that day for so much, like the August 21st, it's gonna be such a, you know, once in a lifetime thing. Her mom and dad, Aaron and Joey, recall what happened that once in a lifetime day. Oh, it's gonna be quiet. We're gonna to get to look at the eclipse through the window. It was about to be eclipse time and they had checked me and I was just dilated to a four. Just 20 minutes later. And all of a sudden I was like, I think I'm about to have the baby. The eclipse was happening and we had the doctor in and the nurses and Joey barely made it in yeah, and she was born. Maybe the eclipse played a part into this fast delivery. You hear all the time about like um, full moons and stuff like that causing like kids to act crazy. Something is going on with the, with the earth. Seven years later. She's the sweetest. She's funny, silly, quietly smart. She didn't even know until 
recently that she was the eclipse baby. A little distracted when the darkness passed through. We didn't get to see the eclipse. We missed it totally. and We didn't care about it at that point. But this time, it's a different story. The Browns say this year's eclipse will definitely be special. We're going to keep them home from school and um, just to get to sit out together and yeah, we'll see what it looks like. And celebrate their eclipse baby. Maybe, Maybe we can have it. a cake. Should we make a cake? Ooh. That says happy eclipse. It says happy eclipse. A little later, Missouri Southern baseball looks to win its series against 19th ranked Central Oklahoma. And after the break, we'll talk about the weather you can expect for the eclipse. I hope everyone has had a wonderful Sunday. It was great weather today, and hopefully that trend continues for the solar eclipse tomorrow. Sun's gone down outside downtown Joplin from Cornell Complex. Winds have lightened up a lot as well. The next system that we're tracking is coming in Monday evening. Right now, hasn't formed yet. Still right over here, we'll be making in forming into a low pressure system that will be making its way into our area. However, right now, not much going on. We had some pretty low humidity values today, less than 20% and even some counties were less than 15%. We had this dry air mass that moved through and that's what brought us those storms last night. In addition to that, we also had some pretty fast wind gusts throughout the day, so we had some concerns for fire weather. Those concerns will return later in the week as well. Now tomorrow we'll also have some faster winds, 30, 35 miles per hour around 930 in the morning. Those continue on throughout the afternoon at about 130. So the time of the eclipse, you'll see winds about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Not too fast, but you will see some gusts out there. Now on top of that, the main concern all week has been the cloud coverage. Are we going to be able to see the eclipse? Now this is path of totality at 130. So when the eclipse is passing through and there has been a lot of clearing for these clouds. If you're planning on going to Arkansas or even in eastern Missouri, you'll see mostly a good visibility. However, if you're going to West Plains, maybe not so much. There still seems to be some heavy cloud in that area. And if you're planning on staying in our region, just watching a partial eclipse, some clouds, but there is a lot of cloud breakage, so we may still have some good visibility. Now clouds increase throughout the afternoon hours and we'll start to see the rain push in around midnight um, moving into Tuesday morning. That continues at about 2 a.m. We'll have some isolated thunderstorms across the region and maybe just mostly showers. Those continue on till 3 a.m., but they'll start to die down and by 7 a.m. we're cleared out. We will have some clouds on Tuesday, but for the most part, partly sunny day on Tuesday. The severe threat is mostly going south of us, but for some of our counties that are in a uh, marginal risk for severe storms, we will have main threats being fast winds. Now after that, we'll have some more rain pushing in Tuesday evening into Wednesday. We'll have thunderstorm chances come back around early Wednesday morning around 3.30 a.m. Rain continues all day long on Wednesday with some thunderstorm chances along with just rain showers throughout the day, and they'll start to clear out early on Thursday morning. Thursday morning we'll have a mostly sunny day as well, but we'll have a couple more days of fire weather with those windy conditions. More scattered thunderstorms coming back around on Monday and again on Wednesday. So quite a bit of rain chances in the forecast. But clearing up a little bit for the eclipse. Yes, we'll keep our fingers crossed yeah. and we'll stay updating you in the morning hours as well. Make sure you wear your eclipse glasses if you're going to watch it as well. Definitely wear Absolutely. the eclipse glasses. Absolutely. Thank you, Lindsay. Travel and tourism expect is expected to bring in over $11 trillion in 2024. A report released by the World Travel and Tourism Council is this year will beat the roughly $10 trillion the industry made before the pandemic in 2019. The report estimates around $5 trillion will be spent by domestic travelers and nearly $2 million by international tourists. They also predict global, global tourism will contribute to nearly 500 million jobs. A new survey reveals that a startling number of rideshare drivers have crashed their car on the job. The survey, conducted by researchers at the University of Illinois Chicago, found that one out of every three for hire drivers have been involved in a crash while on the job. 
The survey involved 277 drivers who self-reported their histories and behaviors. Results showed that some of the most common reasons for accidents on the job included cell phone use and driving while tired or traveling on unknown roads. Coming up in sports, the Missouri Southern Lions look to cap off their weekend series with a win. Plus, Iowa faces South Carolina for the national championship game. Brock Baldridge has the highlights and more up next. The Missouri Southern Lions have a handful of games remaining in the regular season. The Lions look to get back on track after their Sunday series finale. At Warren Turner Field, Missouri Southern is facing the Broncos of Central Oklahoma. We begin in the first inning as Garrett Rice hits a deep fly ball into that win. The outfielder can't find it. And guess what? Nobody else can either because it's gone for a three-run homer. The Lions take an early 3-0 lead. We go to the fourth inning now. Southern is down 5-4. Nate Miskowski hits this ball deep to center field. Caleb Glass is out of room and it's out of here for a two-run home run. And the Lions take a 6-5 lead. We go to the fifth inning now. Southern looks to extend their lead as Garrett Rice, what a weekend he's had. Hits this to center field. Glass can't make the play out there and watch this. The ball bounces off of his foot. Two runs coming to score and Missouri Southern Leads it eight to five. A few batters later, Drew Davis hits the sharply up the middle. Rice will score and Missouri Southern clinches the series. Lions win this game big, 17 to six, the final. Elsewhere in the MIAA, the Pitt State Gorillas face the Central Missouri Mules. And well, there's a reason they're ranked number two in the country. UCM completes the sweep of Pitt State by winning the series finale 13 to four. The Gorillas hit the road for Emporia State on Tuesday. Well, it's been two years since the Kansas City Royals have a record above 500, but that was the case on Sunday as the Royals look to complete a four-game sweep. Windy day at the K, taking on the team from the Windy City, top of the fifth, former Royal Andrew Benatendi. It's an RBI single to center field. The White Sox get out to a three to nothing lead. So we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning now. Hunter Renfro at the plate, had a slow start to the year, but Puts a good swing on it, and you can put this ball on the board. Yes, two-run home run. Royals get within the run. It's a 3-2 to two game. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning now. Same score, MJ Melendez belts this high fastball into the fountain deck in right field, and it's gone for a go-ahead two-run home run. White Sox looked to challenge the play to see if there was any fan interference, but after review, the call stands. Royals sweep the Sox. Kansas City goes on to win the game 5-3. Meanwhile, the St. Louis Cardinals wrap up their series with the Miami Marlins, who are no longer winless. Miami takes down St. Louis 10-3. The Cardinals will stay home and face Philadelphia on Monday night. Well, Sunday marks the final game of the women's college basketball season. The Iowa Hawkeyes look to win after finishing as runner-ups last season. On the other hand, South Carolina looks to go undefeated. Caitlin Clark, the biggest name in the game, looks to win Iowa's first national title. So in the first quarter, Iowa leads by eight. Clark shoots this one from way beyond the arc, and she drills it. Hawkeyes lead by 11. Later in the half, USC starts to go on a run as Camelia Cardoso works down low. She picks up the bucket and the foul. Such a tough player to defend. Iowa only leads by one point. Over to the third quarter, South Carolina leads by eight. Tessa Johnson is ready in transition. She drains that three-pointer. Gamecocks lead by 11. Iowa made it interesting in the fourth quarter, so just over two minutes left in the game. Jumper for Carolina is no good, but Cardoso is there for the rebound and the putback. That pretty much seals the deal. South Carolina goes on to defeat the Iowa Hawkeyes 87 to 75. The Gamecocks are national champions. South Carolina caps off the undefeated season. You know, I was really rooting for Iowa in that game, but South Carolina, what a season they've had. They go undefeated. Fifth program in women's national history to go do that. And what a season Caitlin Clark has had as well, yeah. too. She's been fantastic this year. And also, shout out to the Cardinals. They started off strong. Unfortunately, they lost today. Yeah, you but know what? You can only hope to be better tomorrow. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Brock. We'll be right back. If you're ever on the go and want to still be able to watch our newscast live, just download the KOAM Plus app. It's free of charge on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, as well as Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Just search for the KOAM Plus app. Again, it's free. 
The most popular movies in theaters this weekend primarily involve primates. David Daniel isn't just monkeying around. He has the early box office estimates for the top five films. Where's the skadoosh? Kung Fu Panda 4 made $7.9 million for fifth place and a domestic total of $166 million. The first Omen debuted in fourth place, finding a weaker than expected $8.4 million in the collection plate. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came up with $9 million, giving the latest paranormal comic adventure third place and $89 million domestic. Monkey Man opens strong in second place. Dev Patel stars and makes his directorial debut with the action drama, which made $10.2 million. Something is coming. Something even they're afraid of. Godzilla Kong The New Empire keeps exceeding expectations. The latest monster mash easily kept the crown with a $31.7 million weekend for a 10-day domestic total of $135 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I saw Godzilla. It was a pretty good movie, so go watch it. Um, pretty good weather that we're going to be have holding an off, holding off for the the eclipse. Yes. So clouds roll in around noon on Monday, but we'll have some breakage in the clouds right in time for that solar eclipse. But storms do come back around after midnight on Monday. All right. Final sports note. Well, Missouri Southern eclipses that 30th win of the season. Lions. They stay up in the second place in the MIAA standings. You told me that was coming, and I didn't believe you. <laughs> all right, that's our time for now. From all of us here at KOEM, have a great night.